Glory to the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is Lord, He is Lord all the time. He is Lord. Your name is exalted. Your name is exalted. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. Scripture actually says it. And it's something worth living for. Tied directly to the testimony of Jesus. We see it in Isaiah chapter 61. of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach to the poor to preach the gospel to the poor I'm with you I'm with you he has sent me to mend the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn to console them who mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called trees of righteousness. Trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Our conversation today is on the most important identity there is in our time. The trees of righteousness. They might be called the trees of righteousness. Now, I had a conversation with a brother, Brother Tony. And um, it got to a place of his conversation that I began to realize that the conversation is not for me alone. So I went live. Today, while depending on what the Lord has taught our brother about the three churches available in the providence of God. And I want him to start from there so he comes into our identity as the trees of righteousness, the preachers of the kingdom of God, the preachers of the kingdom of God. So, brother... Go on. The table is being given to you. The ball is on your court. Just swim through the revelation you are sharing with me just now. And I trust that the hand of God will convict the minds of people, the hearts of people, and they begin to see the light that we've captured. Glory to God. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it is actually a very crucial time that we are in. And uh, very important to God is revealing some exclusive revelations that he has hidden right from ages that he has not even revealed it to people in this generation. Hardly any first person in the world has seen some of the things that God is revealing today. Even the days of Paul, they never saw, they never received it. Now, we are going into what we call the peace of righteousness. What are these peace of righteousness? First, we must understand what righteousness is and what a tree is in the, in the light of God. We know that uh, uh, Moses, the law of Moses, was a type of righteousness. Because in uh, um, Deuteronomy 6.25, he told them that if, if they continue in that law, it will be it, in them they will have life. It will be their righteousness. So the law of Moses was a type of righteousness. Then we also saw that baptism of John was also a type of righteousness. Because when Jesus went to him at the Jordan, he said, uh, John did not want him to be, he John wanted to be baptized rather of, uh, by Jesus. But Jesus said, do it to fulfill all righteousness. So the baptism of, Jesus, of John was a type of righteousness too. Then we come to Jesus. Jesus was a type of righteousness because Jesus is the end of the law 
to unto all righteousness. Mm. So we are seeing that of righteousness here. Now we are seeing the righteousness which is of Moses. And Moses is a church. Mm. Because we remember that the church in the wilderness. Moses was a church. Now mm. we also see the righteousness of John the Baptist, who is Elijah. So John the Baptist. That was Elijah, another gathering. Yes. That was another gathering unto God for a season. So Moses was about yes, a gathering unto God. John the Baptist was John about a gathering unto God. God. In every sense of the that word, Jesus that was a church for his time. That was the church. Even Jesus said it. Jesus said, He is a burning and shining light. Hmm. If you look at Revelation, you see that there were seven lambs burning before the throne of God. And those lambs were called the seven spirits of God. Hmm. So, John the Baptist is a prophetic voice of God. Now, Jesus now mentioned, he said, the law and the prophet were until John. So Moses came with the law. John the Baptist, who is a legend, came with the... Uh, the culmination of the prophets. The prophet. He came with the nation of the prophets. Now, if you look at the law, the law was a yoke to bind. Now, if you look at the prophet, the prophet was a key to declare. That's why John opened heaven. Mm. So, when, Elijah opened heaven too. Elijah opened heaven when he was going. When the law was binding. When the law was taking him away. The, the gospel, the message is enclosed in the law. The mm. law is yeah, the law binds. The law is the binder. It's the one that is binding the message. Now, it's the coder. It's the, the, code, it's the coder. Whereas, the, the prophet is the decoder. That's the opener. So, we now are talking about these three are trees. And what is a tree? So, spiritual understanding. A tree is a spirit. A life-giving spirit. You understand? Mm. A life-giving spirit. That's why Jesus said in John 63, he said, it is the spirit that given life. Now, even naturally, because the scripture tells us that the things that are of God are revealed in the things that are created, we see that it is trees that give oxygen to man. Hmm. So, trees are life giving objects. Now, we now take it, you go to the three churches we're talking about now, that they are trees of righteousness. You remember in Mark 8 23, when he said, uh, he told the man to look up, and the man said, if the man looked up and said, he saw men walk like trees. Yes, yes. Now, so, men are trees, and who are men? They are spirits. Now, if you look at the church, how do we know the church? The symbolism of the church is revealed in Revelation uh, one twenty. Now, in one twelve, when John said he turned aside, what did he see? He saw seven golden candlesticks. When he saw those seven golden candlesticks, he said there was the Son of Man walking in the midst of it. Yes, someone like the now, Son of Man. Now told us the explanation of that candlestick. He said the mystery of that candlestick is the church. So the church is the burning and shining lamp. Wow. The church is the lamp. Now, if we will now go further, in Zechariah 4, 1 to 6, we saw the description of the church. It's like, a, it's like an olive tree. It's like an olive tree. Now, when we go to Moses' home, Moses' home was like an almond tree. Wow. Wow. The tabernacle. And that's why right. he said, make sure that make sure that you do it exactly according to the pattern that was shown. That I've sh- that I've showed you. So there was a candle, there was a golden candlestick also in the time of Moses, the burning and shining lamp. You know. Now, Proverbs, uh, Proverbs twenty twenty seven, made us to understand that uh, the spirit of man is the candle which God searches the heart. Wow. 
spirit of man is a tree. The spirit of man is the church. The spirit of man is the Catholic. And this church means the grace because it is the high to smother the mysteries of God. Yes. Now, we now see these three churches again because we have identified them as lambs. Because even Jesus who has a church, Jesus is a church. Because Jesus himself said, I am the lamp of the world. He is the light of the world. Now, everywhere, everywhere Jesus is, these other two are there because they are the two witnesses that are with him. Moses and Elijah. Oh, yes. That's what we saw in Transfiguration. In Transfiguration, in Matthew 17, we saw these three together. Now, Elijah was there, Moses was there. That means the law was there, the prophet was there, mm. and the gospel was there, which is the kingdom of God. That's why I mm. said the law and the prophet were. Now, so these are the three righteousness we have. So there is a righteousness according to law. There is a righteousness according to prophecy. Then there is a righteousness according to the kingdom of God, which is the cross. Hmm. Now, of this three righteousness, and two who cannot, two who cannot deliver mankind. The law could not suffice for mankind. Because the law was limited by the power of condemnation in the flesh. Hmm. Also, the angels because the prophecy is, the, is of the angels. It could not suffice for me because angels do behold the face of God in heaven. They cannot see the face of God. So in, 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 in Job 14, 16, uh, in 14, 16, Job 14, 18, and 15, 18, he said, God, even the angels, he says, are not righteous, are not perfect before him. So, even the angels, the the prophets, the, 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 the voices of God, they cannot see the face of God. So these two types of righteousness are not acceptable before the face of God. Hmm. So the only righteousness that is acceptable before the face of God is the kingdom of God. Wow. Child. Wow. So you receive the kingdom of God like a little child. Now, how do we know that this little child is the righteousness we are talking about? This little child is a sense of humility. Now, angels don't have humility, and there is no humility in the law. Rather, in the law, there is anger. Hmm. In the law, there is wrath. In the, in the prophets, there is pride. Now, hmm. when Jesus was in, 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 in Matthew, when they were when they were disputing about the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said they should bring the little child. And he said, Whosoever has converted like this little one, they are to be the greatest. They'll be the greatest. He now went for that in, in verse 5 of it. He said, Whoever receives any of those little ones in his name receives him. Hmm. So Jesus himself is a little child in heaven. There's a little, there, there are little angels which is called the children. Now, in verse 10, he now said, This is the angels of this little world who will behold the face of my father in heaven. So they are the righteousness that can see face to face with God. They are the righteousness that can know and receive the everlasting mercy from God. They are the righteousness that can look into the eyes of God. No other righteousness can look into the right eyes of God. So this righteousness is the righteousness of the gospel of the cross. So mm. now, if you now go to Revelation, if you go to Revelation 12, you will see in verse 5 that it is a power that is seated upon the throne of God in heaven. So there is a righteousness that sits upon the throne. But there are also these two righteousness that are on the right hand side and on the left hand side of the throne. They are closest to the throne, but they are not on the throne. Wow. Moses is close to the throne, but he's not on the throne. Elijah is close to the throne, but he's not on the throne. Let us remember the, the, the uh, report that that woman who had two children, Andrew, uh, the mother of Andrew and James, who was asking that Jesus should allow his children to sit on the right and on the left, left side of the, his throne. 
She's asked. There's a suffering, there's a tribulation that they must go through to inherit the kingdom of God, to inherit that righteousness. There is a fire, there is a tribulation. Wow. No, but that's why there was nobody to break the seal to take the book from the hand of the person on the throne and break the seal. Because the consequence of breaking it is death. Wow. He said, He who breaks the egg, the serpent will bite him. Remember, it was a serpent giving to Moses. Oh, yes. It was a serpent. Because Moses had told the Jews, He said, You have the Wow. And that's why the said, of all that is born of women, there is no one better than John. Now, who are those born of women? Those who are born of women they are those who are under the law. Wow. They are those who are under Moses. So there are Moses came out of Egypt, out of the Nile. That's where the power of death is. So that's why he said in Hebrews 2 14 to 15, he said, that he might deliver those who are continually who were in bondage, because who were continually kept in bondage because of the fear of death, because of the fear of him that has the power of death. The one that has the power of death are the Jews, the law. That's why Jesus is called King of the Jews, because he has eternal life. If you have eternal life, you will be able to break the law. Hmm. You will break the law. And that's why Jesus broke. Law. Now, the law is a security, it's a code. And that's why even in today, there's something the, if the Jews are the are, are, are the most most sophisticated security technology in the world today. Whatever the Jews find, nobody can unravel their technology. Nobody wow. can decode the Jewish code. They are called nobody. Now the data is again the prophet. That's why I said to them that the word came, we call them gods, and the future is not broken. Because they have been given to me over the Lord, the prophet, that Elijah. But the weakness of the prophet is woman. The prophet are done, just like you see Samson, you see Elijah, you see John the Baptist, they are challenging for women. So the prophet too well, well, the prophet were were limited by the sense of morality. So their weakness is woman. But now we now have a greater righteousness, which is the gospel, the kingdom of God, the cross, the righteousness of the cross. Now the righteousness of the cross now is the one is the church that is enclosing the knowledge of eternal life. Wow. The knowledge of eternal life is the knowledge. Is the knowledge of the mystery of God. Is the knowledge of God Himself. That's why it's called the dispensation of God, the gospel of God. Now that knowledge has power over death and over flesh. That's why it is the knowledge that has power over sin and death. Wow. The prophets were limited by sin. The law was limited by death. So, but this one has power over sin and death. That's why it has power over hell and death. Wow. Now, this, this righteousness now. Is the righteousness of the cross. It is the church of the understanding of the mystery of God. Now, this church now is the one that now reconciles the, the prophets, which is the voice of heaven, because the prophets are the voice of heaven. 
He said, they haven't declared the glory of God and the firmament show forth his handwork. So, the prophets come to declare. The, the, the prophets open heaven. They are, they are the ones who declare. They declare. The council of heaven. So the law binds, the, law binds, the prophet the opens. Declare. My God. Declare. But what is found and what is declared is the posture which is concise them. Wow. Now, so we have Jesus now, which is the mystery, is the posture. That's the image and glory of God. That's the posture of God. The posture enclosed and bound by the law and declared by the prophets. Now, the prophets are declaring it, but no sinner can go near it. Now, the law too is enclosed it. Nobody can unlock the law. Wow. But now, the picture is given to us through an understanding. That's why I said, Christ came to give us an understanding of the true one. That's John 5, 20. He came so that the, the churches represent trees of understanding. A tree is a figure of understanding. That gives and life. Wow. Understanding is what gives life. Understanding is righteousness. That's why I said, look, the just, the soul that is lifted up is man, is not upright, but the just shall live by faith. Yes, yes, the yes. We understand. So, understanding is self it's faith. So, there's an understanding that we know you to be discovering something, like Peter. Peter was able to discover the code. Jesus was in the code. He was a flesh. No, they couldn't see through him. It was a mystery. Unravel, unraveled. That was when he was asking them, who the people say I am? They were looking at his appearance. But Jesus and Peter was given the entrance of an understanding to see what was beyond that scope. Wow. He, he was able to interpret the term. He said, you are Christ. So the, the, Peter was a type of heaven, spirit of heaven, declaring the glory of God. In he real time. Healed, he opened heaven. Do you understand? Peter he opened, opened heaven. heaven. And had bound because he was he was born of a bond woman under the law. So he was born with a, he was bound. Jesus was bound with the body with appearance. He was bound with the appearance of death. So that's why the Jews who could not recognize him. They thought he was flesh and blood. That's why they wanted to kill him. Say he's even flesh and blood was saying he's that God. he is God. That he's, 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 he's comparing himself with God. That's the crime they brought against him. But that was the code they were seeing. They were seeing his appearance. But it was Peter, now who was even understanding, who see beyond the, the law, being the prophet, he declared what was inside him. That's why I said, now upon this stone, I'll build my church. That's the now, foundation that of my church. Yes. Yeah. So that was another, that was a type of understanding. Because for you to be able to see true, that means you must have remitted sin. You must have been sanctified. You must have been awakened. You must have received baptism of remission of sin. So it means that you have been taken into the, the wilderness where your eyes are open. Because the, what is blindfold? The blindfold is, 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 is sin, is flesh, the consciousness of this world. Canality. That's why I said, upon Mount Zion, the day will be removed on, the, on Mount Zion. Wow. So that day we was removed from Peter. That was when Peter was able to see truth. So those are the prophets. The prophets are voices that declare. That's why in Proverbs for uh, Proverbs for uh, Proverbs twenty five two he said it is the it is the honor of God to conceal to a conceal matter, a matter to search it out. And uh, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search it out. So. Those voices of heaven declaring the glory of God, they are God. That's why God, the heaven declared the glory of God. The family man showed forth his hand, but John to John to speak, not of the answer of knowledge. There is no language in which their voices are not heard. So the voices of the prophets, they are declarers. They hmm. declare what is hidden. Hmm. Do you understand? So that was the, that, so that's like the type of understanding. So there is a type of understanding that you that you receive, that you will be analyzed and, and, and discovering scripture. You will be discovering lemma. You will be discovering lemma. But that does not feel give you the perfection that can stand to see to the eyes of God. Face to face. Yeah, because you are, they are limited. 
They are limited. That's why they are up. They are like those. They, they don't come down. They can't come down because of sin. It's how people are the people or upon the mountain of those that feel the good news. They cannot, they cannot set their feet on sin. So that's their own weakness. Their weakness is that their feet does not touch sin. They are always on own ground. So that's their own weakness. Their weakness is sin. Because the moment they are pissed with sin or they are touched with sin, they will fall. They will lose their mind. Hmm. Yes, sir. So the only righteousness now. Now, we have seen two types of righteousness now. The righteousness of the law. Of the law, then the righteousness of now, the prophets. Those who have the law, then we have seen the righteousness of the prophets. Those who have been, who are able to see the end from the beginning. Now, it is not just seeing the end from the beginning, but actualizing Entering it. Entering it. Manifesting it. it. That is now the righteousness of the gospel. Because the righteousness of the gospel is the one that reconciles the law and the prophets. Wow. wow. The righteousness of the gospel has power over death. Wow. Because it is the knowledge of God, it is eternal life. So when you have the knowledge of God now, then you'll be able to both descend and to ascend. Wow. Just like the Paul was told in Ephesians 9 and 10 that. He, 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 he that ascended, he ought to descend, then to ascend. It is the one that ascended, that has that not descended. Now, so because he's the one that has descended and ascended now, he gave gifts to men. He was the one that now gave some apostles, some gifts, because he's the one that was able to see the favor in God's eye, to be able to give all the gifts, to take all the gifts. That's why I said, Blessed be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us all spiritual blessings. Spiritual blessings. Yes, Jesus, so, 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 so what Jesus? So what Jesus Christ did was to see the face of God for man, then take yes. things from God and deliver to men, so that men can both repeat the process because of ascending. God, simple. simple, because for you to ascend to the throne of God. You must be like God. You must have the confidence of God. Wow. The only acceptable confidence before God is the appearance of God Himself, the likeness of God. You cannot come before God. That's why there was nobody to, even the angel, the elder said it, there was nobody to go to receive that book from the man, the one of the souls. Wow. Because nobody was like God. That's why the only one that is given that testimony. Is Adam. Adam is the blood of Jesus. Wow. Adam is the one that was given the testimony to be like God. What's the blood? Blood simply means testimony. It is the gene. The genealogy of God was given to Adam. Adam himself is the blood of Jesus. So it is the one that has that substance of God that is the witness of God that is able to die and to resurrect because it is that blood. That testimony of God is the power of change, the change factor. Wow. And that's why Ephesians 2, 14 to 16 said, He reconciled both in one body, in one through the, the, through the blood of Jesus. He reconciled both through the blood of Jesus. So that blood is what reconciled the law and the prophets. Wow. So, because the law and the prophets are joined together in the testimony of God because the glory, the, the whole essence is for the glory of God. So when one found, the other is key. When one is called to bind, the other is key to, to lose. interpret what is bound. Wow. You understand? Wow. But yes, you cannot, there is, there is the code and there is the key, but who will go and take it? Who will use it? Who will when engage it? it? Who will decode it? No, no, there's already somebody, there's already a code. There's already a key. There's already a decoder, the person of Christ. There's a code, there's a code, which is the law. The code is binding the content. The content of the book, there's a book. Let's assume there is a book with a key. Hello? Yes, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's a book with a key. 
Ah, tu sais. Those are you people that belong to the church of the prophets. He cannot go through it. He cannot pass through the course. Because it's one thing for you to have that. Yes, you already have the code, you have the key. You know this is the interpretation. But you can't pass through the road. That's why David said, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? So these ones that they can't pass through. Because for you to, for you to profit, you must go through the passage. Now, the door at the gate has been opened for you, but now it's to enter. That's why I tell people that, okay, heaven has been opened. The gate of Elijah has opened the gate of heaven. Who will enter? Hmm. Moses locked it. Elijah has opened it. It was locked to us before. In the flesh. Now, Elijah, John the Baptist, has come to open it. But if you first open the heaven, is the Jesus. Gate is open and you don't enter. Is Jesus that entered? You have to enter. Is Jesus yeah, that entered? Said, is Jesus that entered? Is John the beloved that entered? Because heaven requires to enter, requires you to lay down your life. From how many people want to lay down their life of this world? Wow. wow. Yes, there are a lot of ministers. Yes, a lot of people can recite, memorize the scripture. They can memorize the scripture according to the law, everything. Now, some people can even memorize and interpret. But how many people want to enter? How many people want to beat their heart? How many people want to put their heart down to the cross so that they can enter? Wow. The gate is open. No water. If you want to make heaven, heaven, I will open heaven. I want to make heaven. Will you make heaven while you are alive? When you still to have the heaven, fear of die. death. When you have <laughs> so the fear of death. Fear of death you enter. Can you enter? You can't enter. You can't enter with the fear of death. Because with the fear of death means you can't lay down your life. That's why Jesus said, whoever loses his lose life for him will gain it in eternal life. Wow. So whoever cannot give his life is not worthy of it. John, uh, John 6, uh, 53, 51, now said, Luke, he said, if my life, which I will give for the life of this world, is an exchange. If you truly believe in that life that is told you, that is declared to you by the prophet, now come and enter. Drop this life. That's why you saw that even Peter, Peter, no, Peter was able to see through Jesus. He was like John that opened heaven. He saw the he saw this posture, he saw the calling, he saw what we are called to become, the image. But Peter could not go through the way of the cross with Jesus. Only John, out of all the two disciples, went to Jesus across that road. That means, eh? Um, That's why it's called... Bro- Brother Tony, yeah. that means there yeah. is a, a road that Jesus actually came to open for mankind. I probably yes, want to embrace this road as the way. When Jesus says, I am yes. the way, that's what he's saying. And the truth and life. Now, what's that way? That way is the knowledge. Now, the angels, which are the prophets, they did not have the knowledge of the mystery of God. That means they didn't have the knowledge of eternal life. Now, for you to be able to enter, you must have confidence that you can resurrect. 
You must live See, with that for, resurrection confidence. For a farmer, for a farmer to, to drop his seed to fall to the ground, he understands that. He has that confidence that that tree will harvest. grow. Wow. He knew by experience that that tree will grow. So, for you to drop your life, you know that by experience, that there's a knowledge, you have a cognitive experience of the knowledge of harvest. Hmm. So when God says, go into that road, enter into that darkness, fall into that peace. But you are not able to do because you are afraid that you have level down. Experience of your, your, your past material and kind of experience helps you to understand that this is death. Nobody has come from death before. But there is an understanding which gives you the experience of the knowledge of God. So because you have this experience, you have the confidence that when you lay down your life, it will be multiplied. There is a power. Wow. Because then you have pretty truly have the power. That's why Jesus said, I have the key of death. That is exactly what Jesus brought to us. That is why he said, I have the key In of my death. hands. So because I have the it's knowledge. So because you have the understanding of this key, because that key is the truth. That they say sanctify them in the truth, that word is truth. That key, that knowledge. So if you have that knowledge, you will not be afraid of death. Remember I told Moses, he said, there shall no man see my face and live. But if you have the understanding of the power of eternal life, you can see his face, you will die, and you will live again. That's why Jesus said, I lay down my life and I take it back. Hmm. So for him to say, I lay down my life and I take it back, that means he has an understanding of a knowledge that can restore his life. Back. He had the knowledge of the voice of resurrection. Yes, yes. So now, what the world has said, what, what the devil is doing to the world, no man has been able to go through that road because of fear of death. That's like the love of this world. Nobody wants to lay down. Nobody wants to go through the throne. Nobody wants to beg. Nobody does that. You have people talking to them. The Christians, the Christians should not beg. Who says you will not beg? If you are going to follow through that road, that is a road of shame. It's a road of humiliation. It is the, it is the, it is the most horrible way you can go. It is death. You know what happens to somebody when he dies? A body when he dies. The, the corruption is rot. It seems to corrupt. It seems to decompose. All yes. kinds of smell. Only one thing will be coming out of the body. That one will come to your soul. Because it's the soul that is going to do that journey, not your body. There is something in you that is going to go through. And when you are going through that journey, all manner of shame will be appointed to you. You will beg, you will walk naked, your, your mates will see you as a nobody. You will be, you will be an odious smell to them. Apostle Paul calls it this, we were the scum of the earth. Yes. You know, but at the end, Glory. we come out glorious. Glory. So they will now look back and wow. Now, this, that is why I said, this is the day of the vengeance of the Lord. So, pray the day of the vengeance. What is the vengeance? The vengeance is that now the enemy of God has been trampled. That's why Jesus said in, uh, in John 12. He said, now is the prince of this world condemned. Because the prince of this world will not be condemned. Because the prince of this world is that which raises himself above all that is called God. Wow. All that is called God is the power of eternal life. So the pride of this world, because the pride of this world is wickedness, and that is why God gave you to them to suffer you, because you are you want people to remember God. What this world wants is that people should never remember God again. Hmm. So because what is God? God is the power of eternal life. God is immortality. 
So, but they have told you that, look, oh, there's nothing like immortality. There's nothing like eternal life. When you are dead, you are dead. So, most people are programming their structures according to that. That pattern, that code, that mystery. Wow, we're having a, a, a understanding and belief. Oh, so nice. that they okay. have forgotten God. Wow. Anything they are doing, they are no longer putting God into consideration. Wow. People say, ah, time is going, time is going, do what you want to do fast. So do this, so do this. You so only live once. They say you know. By their oblivion of God's knowledge. Wow. The, God is says God is not in their thoughts again because, my dear brother, is in your thoughts, you will not be in a hurry. You will not see begging as any problem. That's one of the things that the culture of the north, they have to beg. If you like, go and be a minister, you will come back to be a beggar. You come back to be a martyr. That's why when Jesus was saying to them, said, when I was hungry, you gave me no food. That means Jesus too begs. He's telling you that it's a spirit that we beg. When I was in prison, when I was naked, that is the road. He said, it is reproach. It is stigma. It is the way of the valley of the shadow of death. Mm. So you don't want the TV folks to have uh, sorry. And you want to become you want to get the honor of the image and glory of God. Because the honor of the image and glory of God is the righteousness beyond death. It's immortality. That's the glory of God. That's the image of God. So and that is why anybody that attains that image has fulfilled all the law. Because the love of God that will make you to go through that route. It means wow. you have sacrificed yourself. You have rented your not your 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 vain good for eternal good. Wow. The eternal glory we are talking about. He also is going to be here too. Because when the soul is the soul that is going through that journey. When the soul has completed that journey, has come to God, and when he said to God, he it is finished. Father, I want to be, I commend my spirit. Immediately, there is going to be a change of a translation. That's what Paul was saying in that uh, first uh, Corinthians 5. He said, in a trickle of an eye, you'll be translated. Because that journey of reproach is meant to destroy your pride as a man. Now, God wants to take what the... God gets enough, Pride, pride. Pride of the heart. Pride. The enemy is just pride. He's pride in the heart. That's why he doesn't come unto me all you that live on every day I'll give you rest. Learn of me. For I am low. Uh, I am low. I am meek at that. So the first, that's why I say, blessed are the poor in spirit. So you know that, if, that is why it is called crucifixion. What did Jesus crucify on the cross? Is pride. He finished that battle at the Garden of Gethsemane. Pride. That's why I said, not my will, thy but will yours. be done. Yours be done. Not my will, thy will be done. Because it is the desire of man to do his own will. Yes. For this church, most people, everything they are doing is their will. They wow. To God because of their will. They are going to God because of their own thing. They are fasting because of their will. They are not doing the will of God. That's why like Jesus said, not to, no, no one will enter into my not those who come into God, no, enter into the kingdom. But those, but those that do, do my will. That's why like Jesus said, I have I have done, I have finished the work that thou gave us to me. The work is that you humble yourselves. Wow. You enter your that the will of God might take preeminence. Might be done. Yes. So, but so what, what you are saying now, sir, what you are saying now is that the righteousness yeah. of the gospel humbles yeah. mankind. The that righteousness of the gospel is supposed to break pride off the back it's, of man. It, 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 this is the bottom line. This is the bottom line. See, the righteousness of the gospel is to make the world not have any meaning to it. Wow. That's 
the God of life. So if the world has meaning to you, you cannot claim to have the kingdom of God. Wow. <laughs> That's why I call it the pride of this world. Wow. So you can see all the names, all the names. I don't want to mention names. All the topics you have, all the different names, America, Nigeria, all the they are not of the kingdom of God. Because this world still has meaning to them. Big cars have meaning to them. Jet planes have meaning to them. Houses in Banana Island have meaning to them. What are you saying? He said in, in uh, Romans 1, he said they have given the glory of God to the image of corruptible things. Wow. That's pride. Pride is not that you are supposed to wear a garment of, you can afford a suit of $1 million. You are wearing 10,000 naira shoes. Uh, 10,000 naira suit. That's not humility. Humility is that you have the 10, the 10, 10, the $1 million in your account and you trust in itself is pride. That it has meaning to you is pride. Because mm. it is God alone that should have meaning in you. Mm. Your treasure should be God. Your treasure should not be anything of this world. That's why he told uh, Martha. He said, look, no, this Mary has given her attention to the, the important thing. The most it's important only one thing. thing that is important. Please, God. That's why Peter, look, Peter said, look, we do not need to concern ourselves about the things of the table. We need to concern ourselves about the, 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 uh, dividing the word of God. And prayer. Not table. Not the affairs of it. Give this one to the administrator. Give it to the children of Satan. Give it to Judas. Wow. <laughs> that is their own ministry. Give the money to them. There are some people. That's why I said, I'm not choosing you to have a one of you is a devil. The devil is the one that is allotted to that ministry. He's, a, he's also an angel of God. Don't forget, God told him that he will eat us all the days of his life. So give him his ministry, give him his portion. You have no business in that ministry. Corruption. You have no business. I have no business in money ministry. But today, look at all the things that are preaching all over. So it has been structured, the church itself has been structured under the financial structures of this world. Very true. That's the Christian church. Oh. That's the Christian church in Babylon. Everything, but but that now everything that everything they are preaching, everything they are teaching, they are all the wisdom of this world. How to make money? How to the church has become an institution of the world. The Christian church. The Christian church. Because let's try and put That's definition. Let's put definition between <laughs> the Christian church and the church of the kingdom of God. The Christian church yeah. is different from the church of the kingdom of God. So I, I would like us yes. to cast our touch now on the church of the kingdom mm. of God because it appears that's where we are going to now. We have um, yeah. established what the trees of righteousness is. is yeah. a people that are willing to die so that a prideless world can be achieved. So that a world without pride can be achieved. They are willing to die so that they can propagate their kind, the kind of Christ on the earth. Yeah, we are about to enter the day of the Lord. Amen. The day of the Lord is when the glory of God will become manifest in reality on the face of the earth. Let pause us as a brother for the baby belly My God. My God. <laughs> it will no longer, you know, people have been asking. Even scientists, the knowledge of this world, they've not seen God. They are doubting the existence of God. But now, God is going to become a reality, manifest. We, we, we are not, we are not, we want to live in God. We are, we are not going to be saying it is just Emmanuel. We want to enter into the immanence of God. Hmm. Immanence means the manifest reality of God. When people will not see God walking on the face of the earth, Defying all laws of time and gravity, and speaking, and everything is coming to pass as he is speaking. Hmm. That portion 
that was given now in Genesis 1 to 6 and 7, you will see it manifest. <laughs> it, it is, it will be, it is what you be in power. When he's talking, he's not going to be talking like you and me are just talking. He's not going to be talking like a law, law is talking, tradition is talking. He's not going to be talking like Moses are talking, exegesis. Each word he says will be in power. It will become the tongue of life and death. Mm. If whoever you are on the face of the earth, as long as you, whether you are an angel in heaven, you tell angel to fall down from heaven, angel will fall down from heaven. That's where we want to go now. Because what the devil thought is that there will be no body that will be able to sacrifice his life. But unfortunately for him, he did not know the plan of God. For God had given the coat of skin. That's what I said. The coat of skin God gave to Adam in Genesis. It was a help. It was a guidance. It was a facility for him to go through that road. All these things that I told you, I told you before. All these things were to plan. His fall and everything was to plan. In the gospel. Now, you remember that God gave him a, a, a coat of skin in Genesis. Yes, yes. Now, everything you see there is as significant. What a, is a, what a is product it? of a product of sacrifice worn on him. A garment symbolizes understanding. A garment symbolizes understanding. Righteousness is an understanding. The understanding of sacrifice, the understanding of the cross. Do you remember that when we go to school here, yeah, at, at, at the end of the day, on, on convocation, what do they give us? A robe. A robe! That's why like, you know, like when in the parable of the wedding feast, they said when the man came, there was one man, he didn't have a garment. He didn't have a wedding gown. The man said, you, how did you come in? That means he didn't come in through the door. He didn't come in through the understanding. He didn't pass through the tenth door. Wow. Which is the celestial sacrifice, the lamb that was slain. That celestial sacrifice is an understanding of love for God. The one manner of love, of life, of love is that a man may know his life for his friend. So it means that it didn't even, because for you to lay down your life, it must mean utmost value for you. And it is understanding, that, uh, uh, understanding is the premise upon which value is defined. So it means that they have been given that rope which God gave them was an understanding that is in this world you are going because it immediately say, I'll be telling people that if it was, if it, is, if it was in, the garment that they were thinking that the blood of the Lamb. Now, immediately he was given the garment, he was not supposed to go to the dungeon now. They were not supposed to go down. Because if they received the garment of righteousness, they were supposed to go up. Come back. Recon re to reconciliation would have been achieved if that uh, garment was yes. a symbolism yes. of the blood that of Christ. Yes. You understand? But the garment that was given to them was an understanding for wisdom. That's why God had confidence that man will return. So in the midst of that world, he will not partake the world. Do you know that the prodigal son, the father knew that he will return? That's why he was waiting all day, expecting that he will come. That was why he used to go back. He used to go because the father knew what he had given him. What about uh, Nebuchadnezzar that we was told to the court? The, the, the revelation said that he said he should use the stuff in the he should not cut it from the Because God knew that you will return. So there's an understanding that will make you return. That is the mercy of God for our life. That's why, because when you come into this world, when you fall into a dream state, you can never wake up again. That's why it's a bottomless state. Wow. It's a destruction. Because it is a, it is the catalog that makes you to be the 
is an illusion. You begin to see reality and the truth, whereas reality is not it. Wow. Look, today, today people say, oh, you allow me, you make it simple and easy. This stupid reality, I keep telling people, even in my in my group, all the groups I have, sometimes they say, this one is not. I say, look, I'm not a real person, and I don't want to be real. I'm not real. Reality is limited to death. Anything that is limited to death is not truth. Everything that is limited reality. to death is not truth. It's not truth. Wow. Reality has expired. Truth has no expired. Truth and I is am not eternal. The image of reality. Wow. I am created in the image of truth. God is not a reality. It's truth. Wow. The devil has taken over reality. That's why it's called the principle of the air. The air is the reality. Wow. So the prince of reality, ever say uh, uh, make it simple and real. What's not in real? You don't we don't interpret the words we use and we think terms just come like that. Every term, every expression comes out of an imagination. With concepts. There's a concept, there's an inner concept that you have been that expressing. It, has been, it has been it has been sent. So you you should like encode it and understand yes. it. I say no, let's be real, let's be real. What's the real thing? What's reality? What my Jesus is being real? My 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 spirit tells me to walk in the spirit so that you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. That means walk in the it walk in eternity so you know So that reality. the carnal world does not lure you. You will fulfill reality. You will not be be living by the laws of reality. Rather, you will be living by the laws of eternity. Of eternity. Eternity and reality are not the same. They are two different realms. Reality is the shadow of eternity. Reality is the corruptible version of eternity. Reality has reality has a an expiry date. Eternity does not have an expiry date. Wow. You become the measure, the standard of what we eat. So if you are eating reality, you become a reality and you'll be vulnerable to destruction. You'll become a reality based Christian. Just as the way we are. And you'll be vulnerable to destruction. Wow. And then you'll be afraid of coronavirus, you'll be afraid of cancer, you'll be afraid of all these things. But someone like me, I can't be afraid of cancer, I can't be afraid of coronavirus because they have no power over eternity. Wow. Coronavirus cannot survive eternity. Cancer cannot survive eternity. Tuberculosis cannot survive eternity. Ebola cannot survive eternity. Tell wow. me, I am eternity. Wow, glory to God. My mind, my mind is molded by the hands of eternity. Wow. My oh. understanding is a development of eternity. So, wow. no unclean thing can touch it. Wow. It's a state of holiness. And that's why I can't have blood pressure. Wow. That's why I said to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Come. That's the sin. Come. <laughs> glory. 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 Brother Tony, it's been a it's been a it's been a good time talking to you today. I want to just thank God for the encounters that He has taken us through. And um, before we sign out, I just want you to give your final word to the church, um, especially with respect to the need of the hour. There's need for us to come back to the mysterious. There is need for us to go back to the supernatural. I just want you to encourage God's people, help them go about the need of the moment. Repentance from carnality, repentance from Babylon, and let's come back to the realms of the spirit where the real truth is expressed. Your final words, please. Okay, Okay, my final word is just that they should take a good uh, lesson from the farmer. 
And we should also understand that, uh, by experience, we know that everything in this world is destructible, is perishable. And that is why we have fear of death. The reason we have fear of death is because we know and understand and therefore believe that this world is subject to destruction. Mm. But there's a world that God has promised us which is not subject to destruction, which has been demonstrated by the philosophy of the farmer. The farmer puts his seed in the ground, the seed decomposes, it destroys, and yet it still comes to harvest. So it means that if we focus on a partner value, we will not fully die. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Glory to God. Trees of righteousness. Trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. The time to rise is now. I want to just prophesy in the name of Jesus to proclaim and call you forth. Trees of righteousness in the nation. The ones that have been bought with a price. Rise up. Rise up. We are in the season of the harvest. Arise. Shine. For the light of the cities has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon your city because you have risen to the occasion trees of righteousness the planting of the lord rise up it's time to rebuild the old ruins rise up it's time to raise up the former desolations rise up it's time to repair the ruined cities rise up it's time to repair the desolations of many generations trees of righteousness it's time to promote righteousness in the nations Righteousness, righteousness, righteousness should be what should rend the air. Righteousness that will glorify the nations. Righteousness that will unfold the order of the world to come upon the nations of the earth. Listen folks, the creature has daily awaited for your manifestation. Trees of righteousness, it is a new day welcome thank you father glory 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 let us just round this up with a prayer let's round it up with a prayer let's round it up with a prayer thank you father thank you lord god thank you thank you god of all creation the first the last the beginning the end the one with the master plan the one the one that allows us Search out the mysteries he has hidden. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that is sufficient. Your grace that is able to help us face death and rejoice. Your grace that is able to keep us in the way. Your grace that has helped us won the fight, deliver the victory, and drives us through the way of righteousness. We submit to your grace. We submit to your will. We say, not our will, dear Heavenly Father, but thy will be done. Use us, O oh God. Inspire us, O oh God. Help us, O oh God. Strengthen us, O oh God. And leave us resolute to keep your commandment and possess our testimony of Jesus. We pray today with thanksgiving in our hearts because we know we have overcome the system. We know we've overcome the world by the blood of your son Yahushua HaMashiach and by the confession of our testimony. The confession of our testimony. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. For we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hey family, thanks for joining. Thank you for joining. Um, Lawal Ayokunle, Frank Ehige, um, Stephen Ahorun, they are Pastor Steve. Good to see you. Pastor Jesse, good to see you. Raphael Chiamaka Ajere, Jude Ikuru Refe, Abola Sunday. Thanks for joining. Brother Tony, incredible time in the presence as usual. I want to just bless your heart again. For, for grace, grace, more light, more revelation, more illumination. And the, the Lord will strengthen your hands to win your battles. It will, he will strengthen your fingers to fight. And he will strengthen your feet like hinds feet so that you walk on your higher lands. Thank you, Father. Amen. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Till I see you again, bro. Bye, family. Shalom.